Sunny, it smells amazing coming from over there. What do you got? My beefy butternut squash chili. Ooh. <laughs> yes, you can't help. So uh, first things first, we've got a butternut squash that's already been peeled. Marcel, if you can just uh, dice that for me, it's going to go into the chili later. Um, so you know, what I did is I started off with some chuck, and I just cut it into chunks. Mm. That's why I call it beefy, because it's two layers of beef going down here, right? Okay. We're going to get chunky, and then I'm going to have some ground beef as well. Ooh, double beef. Oh. Double beef, baby. Mm. So what I did was I browned that into the pan. I'm not trying to cook it, just brown it with a little bit of fat. And then in that same um, Dutch oven, I've got some onion, garlic, garlic, red bell pepper going right now. That's what smells yeah, so that crazy good. good. And then gonna start with some flavor from tomato paste. Greatest. Just a little squeeze. And the key here is it comes out so bright red, but the idea is to cook it down until it's a really deep brown. So in there, I'm gonna put some hot sauce. Oh, Your favorite hot, hot sauce, sauce, right? Now, I'm going to add in my seasoning. The same seasoning that I'm going to add in now is just half of what I already put onto my ground chuck. And that's going to be some black pepper, oregano, salt, chili powder, pumpkin pie spice. Whoa. It's awesome because it's got the cinnamon, the ginger, it's really warm, yep. and some cumin. All right, so right in here, that seasoning blend, the other half of it that didn't go into the ground chuck. The hot sauce just made it down here. Yeah. <laughs> it's tickling my nose. Now, into the pan right now, I've got the ground chuck. That's just 80%, 20%. You know, if you get the sirloin, it's just not going to have enough fat to hang yeah, out. Fat. Most right. people uh, would think chili has beans, Sunny. So what's your... Mm. Uh-uh, right? I'm a, I'm a no-bean girl in my yeah, chili. I'm no a no-bean really. girl in my chili. But I've been around so many different places, Detroit chili, Texas chili. Chili. I mean, I'll just take it how it comes, but I prefer no beans. Me yeah. too. I'm with you. I think that people put the beans in because they're like, hey, let's put a little bit more texture and we're going to get that with the butternut squash. So now that I've got the beef mostly brown, I can add back in the chuck that I chucked up before. I love cinnamon and chili, a nice little hint of it. And pumpkin pie spice has it right at the end. I'm going to do a second layer of that chili for you. So just get the beef in there and incorporate it. And the beefy butternut squash. This really happened because I had a butternut squash sitting around. I was going to make chili, and I was like, why not? It's going to soak up the flavor. It's bright. It's going to bring some color to it. And it works out. You can also do this with uh, sweet potatoes. Cornmeal. Ah, thicken it up. I love cornmeal and chili. It just kind of thickens it up, makes a little bit of a gravy for you at the end, tightens it for you. So over the top of that, some beef stock. Mm. This is like the perfect Halloween meal. A little red wine in there. And then just cover it up, cook it down. You know, it takes about 40, 45 minutes or so for everything to get nice and tender. And then you have... Oh. Oh. Bubbling oh. A little beefy butternut squash. Wait, I have, I'm adding a garnish. So here's the, here's the idea. You take a tortilla. Of course, uh -oh. I'm going to add a tortilla. You can just take a cookie cutter and cut out a shape. And then just like you would fry a tortilla chip with 350 degree oil until it's nice and golden brown, you fry them and you get the shapes like this. Whoa. See that? Whoa. Really important though, you have to salt it when they're nice and warm so that the tortilla actually absorbs the salt, otherwise it'll just fall off. So add that nice crunchy, you can do one of each. Oh, there that you looks go. so good. I'm making my easy chili cheese French bread pizza. So simple. I've got the same bread. I've hollowed it out a little bit, though, so I can put that chili in there. And just put this bread to the side. You can make bread crumbs. You can also put it on a sheet and toast it if you've got, like, a cheese sauce at your big game party. It's fun for a dip for your guests. All right, so this is just store-bought garlic butter. Be generous. You know, sometimes I'll even kind of go in and just like pour it down the center <laughs> and then spread it around. I'm going to get this into the oven to toast it. Um, you could do 400, 450. You're just going for the edges to get lightly golden brown. And then you're going to bring it back out and top it. Get this in here. Should only take about, oh, 10 minutes for it to get like this. Then on the inside, I'm gonna add my five ingredient chili. So the five ingredients are so simple. It's just some ground beef, a can of tomatoes and green chilies, a can of black beans, an onion, and chili powder. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna get this into the hollows here. Just scoop this in here and get it along the length. 
I used to be team no beans in my chili uh, until I put some black beans in. We've got kidney beans here. If you want to lean the beans out, you're more than welcome. Uh, and this recipe is actually so simple. All those ingredients, just add them. Makes a very quick and simple chili for your guests. Just five ingredients. We've got that recipe on the Food Network Kitchen app, and I'm even demoing it live for you so you can see how to put it together. But I mean, come on, it's so simple. All right, over the top of this chili, gonna add a blend of cheese, just cheddar and Monterey Jack. You can use cheddar and pepper jack, but I'm bringing a little bit of fire with jalapenos in the end. And what I really like about the jalapenos is they kind of show you a serving size. It makes it easy for people to slice up and portion on their own. So mounds and mounds of cheese. Uh, now, over the top of that, just, you know, think about the serving size and put a jalapeno freshly sliced along the length as well. And then you can imagine when this comes out, people are gonna cut between the jalapenos. Everyone gets a nice little jalapeno bite. And it also adds some curb appeal and just keep on going down along the link. Now, this isn't done. When I bring it out of the oven, there's more toppings. As, as GZ and I were called, wow, GZ, the accoutrement, <laughs> what is going on? All Please, right. okay, I'm gonna get this into the oven for about 15, 20 minutes at 400 degrees. All right, over here, putting a little bit of scallions over the top, making it rain scallions. Rain, make it rain. You can't have enough basil or cheese as far as I'm concerned. Cilantro, Cilantro. over the top to kind of match your basil love. Oh. Then a nice drizzle of crema. If you can't find crema, it's just a looser version of sour cream. Just get in there and add a little bit of milk to your sour cream or even water. Sometimes I'll do some lime juice to loosen it up. It just sounds better, crema, right? It does. Just get that on there. And then a nice to... shake of hot sauce. You You're ready to put ready? this down, oh, Jeezy? Oh, oh. This is a lot of work here. All right. Beep, beep, beep. I mean, come on. Oh, hook me up with the chili and the cheese and the chili and the cheese. There you go. Okay. All right, Jeezy. Of course he would cut his in half. I'm gonna cut mine just like you. That is delicious, the crunch. Oh. Mm. Sorry. Jeezy. Touchdown! It's my Tex-Mex Chili Mac skillet, all done on the grill. All right, so the grill is at about 375 degrees. I'm gonna open it up. I have preheated my cast iron pan here, and I'm gonna start just by adding some oil. All right. And then to that, I'm gonna add my chili powder. and some cumin. Obviously, we're making chili mac, so you gotta have the chili powder, but the Tex-Mex of it all comes through with that cumin. So now it's a good time to get in the beef. I'm just using some 80-20 blend right here, uh, really easy. You can also do 85-15, whatever they've got at the grocery store. I found these days, I'll take whatever they have. <laughs> all right, get that in. Don't forget to have a towel so you can handle your pan, and move that baby around. All right, now's a good time to really season up this beef. And I always say when I'm talking about beef and it's a pound, a teaspoon of salt does the trick. So, teaspoon over, a nice bit of freshly cracked black pepper. All right, I made some marinara sauce, you know, homemade one night, and I had some left over, and the next day I really wanted chili, and I just added some chili powder and some cumin to it, and it did the trick. So I didn't have to really make the chili, it was already done, so just add some of that in there. Move that around. I love to do this pasta, have you seen it, that you microwave? So it comes ready to go. You just zap it in the microwave for a few minutes. But what I like to do is not zap it, I just kind of use it as is. Um, it's par cooked already and it's shelf stable. And uh, what I love about it is a lot of times when we're making pasta, 
we encourage you to add the pasta to cook in the sauce for the last couple of minutes. So it's really smart to do it here. So remember, microwavable uh, pasta, but don't microwave it. And I'm using rotini here, but they've got elbows and penne. It's uh, fun to use. Right in. And then just move it around. You can see it's already very limber. So just level that out and get it ready for the yummy topping. Cheese. <laughs> now, because this is Tex-Mex, I'm using a Mexican blend. It's usually got some uh, Monterey Jack and some cheddar. So if you can't find a Mexican blend, the cheddar and Monterey Jack blend is just as good. Right over the top. Right to the edge. All of it. And then a little bit of curb appeal. I like to just take a couple of uh, jalapenos, slice them up and get them over the top. You can get cute about it or you can just put them on there. Guess which one I'm going to do. <laughs> okay, more. All right. I'll leave some and act like I have a little bit of sense. All right. I'm going to close this up. You can tell, obviously, your grill is going to go down in temperature. So give it a minute to rise back up to about 375. And then after that, probably about 10 to 15 minutes and you're done. Time to lift it. Oh, this looks crazy. Um, okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, deliciousness on 10. My Tex-Mex Easy Chili Mac. So delicious, bubbling with flavor. Now, you know, I would normally tell you to wait a few minutes so the juices can redistribute and all that good stuff and not slide all over the plate, but come on. Look at this and don't forget, oh, the Mac part. Cheese pool official. I always go in for another scoop. Look at that. Check out that ready to go for your microwave pasta too. Such a way to shorten up the process. <laughs> All right, now usually it's sour cream, but I found lately in my kitchen that Greek yogurt is a great substitute. Plus it's delicious, so why not? Get some on there, just plain whole fat. And then some scallions right over the top. Look at that. Mm, come on, weeknight warriors. Dig in. So many shortcuts I share with you so you can get it done. Let me tell you something. If you never made a quick chili out of marinara sauce and some chili powder and some cumin, give it a go. And then adding in the pasta and then throwing on some vegetables like jalapeno. So this is a complete meal. I am making for you my fries, but it's not just any fry. It's my Nunya Business chili on top of my fries, and I'm just gonna load it up just like I do at the stadium. So let me show you how I get it started right here. Uh, in my pot, I've got some olive oil and some onions, just getting sauteed and rendering down nice and tender and translucent. And to that, I'm gonna add in some garlic. Now, this is my easy Nunya Business chili. Very simple to make. Usually chili is all kinds of layers of flavor and, you know, maybe 30 to 45 minutes of percolating on the stove top. This is gonna be done in a minute. All right, so into that olive oil, I just said the oil, but I added a little bit of the garlic. You can smell it right now, nice and fragrant. To that, a little bit of cumin. I love cumin in my chili. Just makes it taste like meat, if you ask me. And that's another trick. You add ingredients that are gonna bring the flavor. Now I've got my pot here on kind of like a medium to medium high. Move everything around. And adding the oil and the spices right now really blooms the spices. So I'm gonna add in some chili powder. And blooming just really means bringing it back to life, you know? A lot of times when you buy spices at the grocery store, it's already been ground up for like maybe six months to a year. So as it sits there and those natural oils are just kind of dormant in that bottle, you gotta bring it back to life and it just starts to really smell and taste like it should. And to that, I'm gonna add in my ground beef and then just go in there and break it up. Oh, it just started to snow. Perfect football weather. Okay. 
Okay, so as we're going into the pot here with a pound of beef, I like to add a teaspoon of salt, and that's a really good ratio for every pound of ground meat. A teaspoon of salt will get it to the perfect flavor level for you. You don't have to worry about like tasting and wondering. So right over the top, some salt. And then anytime you think salt, you gotta think pepper. Get that in there. I always end up loosening the top, right? When you loosen the top, there's a plate in the bottom. It takes the plate further apart from each other, the grinder, and it'll give you a bigger, coarser grind of pepper. So the looser, the bigger boulders you get, and the tighter, the finer pepper you get. Get that in there. I like a lot of pepper. And then just start moving it around and breaking it up. This is a really good all-purpose game day chili. All right, so see, that beef is nice and browned. Now it's time for the nunya part, okay? Usually, so much work to get the flavor into a chili. Phone it in with some jarred marinara sauce, right? It's got everything in it you want, the oregano, probably some basil in there, the garlic, the onions. Yeah, we just put some onions in there. It's just so we felt like we did something. But this is really bringing the flavor right here. Pour that right in. Mm-hmm. Get as much of that out as I can. Oh, yeah. There you go. Stir this up. All right, so look at that. All came together so quick. Minimal ingredients. They all packed a flavor punch. And I gotta take a look at these fries. I'm gonna let this percolate for a second, but I got the fries in here. Yes, yes! Okay, let me crinkle fries, obviously. I think crinkle fries, when you're doing any kind of sauce, like cheese or chili over the top, really, really smart because they're kind of like the fusilli of fries. They catch all the sauce in the ridges. And they have a little bit more of like structure, right? They're like the rebar of fries as well. Over the top of my fries, no, this is not at the stadium, but I like some scallions. So hey, why not chop these up really quick and get these into the game plan. I just enjoy the whole fanfare of going to the game, eating outside in the open air, and then enjoying a drink or two while you watch your team. All right, scallions good to go. It's time to get this baby put together. All right, so I've already got some other chili right here. Bring this big baby over. Then cannot forget the cheese sauce. Close this up. And now it's just to put it together. Oh. Come on, look at this. Katie, I know you love chili. Check this out, girlfriend. None your business chili. Ooh, that sounds so good. Extra cheese, please. You know it, girlfriend. And it's another none your business hit because uh, I did not make the cheese sauce. Just heating it up. A little bit of cheese sauce. Come on, buy it, heat it up. None your business. Mmm, the cascade, as Jeff would say. That looks delicious. All right, remember scallions over the top, a little bit of a crunch. And then, just like at the stadium, some sliced pickle jalapenos. Get them at the nacho station. I'm telling you, I will take that tray of fries all around that section just to get every topping that I want on it. There you have it. 